Hey guys, you're watching Car Topic, and today we're just going to be having a talk about convertibles. Now, I wanted to make this video today just to talk about where these convertibles were made and why they're even around today. Now, unfortunately, we're seeing less and less convertibles every year, so I just want to make this video before they're completely gone just to talk about why they're such great cars and where they came from in the first place. Now, the convertible was very first seen in the late 30s and were actually as a result of World War II. This is when American soldiers were stationed in Europe and saw the British roadsters and how they were super fun to drive and had no top. So once they came back from Europe, they shared this idea of the British roadster and thus the convertible was born. With the top down, you had a roadster-like experience with wind all around you and the sky to look at. But when weather came around, or if you wanted to have a normal driving experience, you could put the top up and drive it like a completely normal car. These grew in popularity exponentially as just a few years after their initial creation and popularization by Plymouth, they were soon to be seen in almost every car manufacturer. They could be seen in the super rare Chevrolet Country Club convertible or the super popular Plymouth Deluxe convertible. And there was also many different types of convertibles. The two that I just mentioned were soft tops and this was the most common. But a few years later, the removable hardtop was born. The removable hardtop was made so that you could have a true roadster experience with the hardtop off, but a completely normal car experience when you have the top on. This could be seen in the Ford Thunderbird or more recently, the NA Miata. The convertible also grew in popularity even more in sunny areas such as California. Because not only could they be used as cruisers, they could also be used as beach cars on sunny days. But enough about the early life of the convertible. Let's jump to the early 2000s, where convertibles are still found almost everywhere. For example, let's take a look at the 2007 Lamborghini Gallardo Spider with 512 horsepower and a 0 to 60 of 4.2 seconds. Or what about the Porsche 996 Cabriolet with 296 horsepower in a 0 to 60 of 4.9 seconds? But these are pretty sporty cars, and that doesn't show even a little bit of how many cars could be found in a convertible. In the early 2000s, if there's a car that you liked, chances are it would be in a convertible option. But as time went on, they became less and less common, and there were many reasons for that, as convertibles were much less safe, and cars on the road were being faster and faster, and the convertible simply couldn't keep up with safety regulations on most cars. But for those who were able to get around the safety regulations, it was simply harder to sell, as convertibles are most seen on smaller cars. And as you probably know, small cars in the United States are dropping in sales dramatically as people are being favored towards larger cars such as SUVs. And SUVs, as you know, don't have convertibles. So sales were dropping incredibly and this is why barely any car manufacturers make convertibles today. As of 2020, there's only 45 convertibles left in all of the United States that you can get new, while just a few years earlier, there were hundreds of them. So, although they don't have many convertibles today, the legend still lives on and you can still buy yourself many great convertible options. And honestly, there's nothing wrong in getting a used convertible back when there were plentiful. But anyways, thank you guys so much for watching today's video. I really hope you enjoyed and I really hope you learned at least a few things about convertibles. Please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoyed today's video. And be sure to let me know down below in the comments what you thought of today's video 
as well as if you have any ideas for future ones. I'll be sure to make it happen to the best of my ability. Now, I also just wanted to let you guys know of a few things. A, we do have an Instagram page, so if you like what we're doing here, please be sure to check it out. And B, I also just wanted to let you guys know, as my personal schedule is becoming a lot more crowded, so I won't be able to meet my requirement of uploading every Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, and Sunday. So I will still be trying to upload more than two times a week, but just letting you guys know, I won't be updating my YouTube channel as frequently. But anyways, thanks again, and I'll see you guys next time on Car Topic.